first of all, congratulations, Becky. How, how does it feel? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, obviously, I've been involved over the last couple of years as assistant coach and clearly work closely with the majority of the squad who are involved with WA. So to be given the opportunity to, to follow on from Shelley and hopefully uh, get us back to competing in the finals, that's uh, I'm really excited for that opportunity. Obviously, massive shoes to fill with, with Shelley, now a World Cup winning coach and obviously a great Australian cricket. How much have you learnt from her over the past few years in the squad just set up? Yeah, so much. She's obviously um, was relatively new to the head coaching gig too, but with the experience not only from playing, but being in around that um, Aussie setup, um, it was really um, great experience for me to be able to see how she goes about things, particularly on the sidelines during a game, how calm she is, how collected she is with her thoughts. That's something that um, I've really been able to learn from and hopefully can take that on. But just being able to pick her brains has been um, something that I am forever grateful for for her and hopefully I can continue to do a good job at the Scorchers moving forward. How do you think you go juggling the Scorchers job with, with WA? Um, I'm, I'm feeling okay about it. I think I've got a lot of good support here. Um, we're hoping to, to get a couple of coaches in and around the, both programs as well. So clearly the women's game's expanding year on year. Um, so, you know, it will be a challenge, but it's something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, a lot of the foundational stuff is already there, so um, it's just a case of building on that and there's a lot of the great people around me who can uh, help me with that as well. How's the squad looking? Are you likely to get Sophie Devine and Beth Mooney and those sort of players back? Yeah, we'd love to. Uh, it's hard to kind of give you a picture in terms of the squad at this stage, given that there's a new MOU happening and trying to figure out who sits where and all that sort of stuff. So obviously, Scorch's embargo period is still um, closed at this stage, but um, clearly every successful team wants to be able to hold on to a core of their players and that's exactly what we'll look to do. Uh, and then just having a look at the different list options uh, is something that we'll work through over the next couple of months. On Beth, how was uh, her game last night? Did you stay up and watch it? Yeah, I did stay up. It was incredible. Um, Beth doing Beth things. Um, she's, she always stands up in big games and you kind of expect her to do that now. Um, but yeah, she was awesome again, did her role, put, knew her role really well and, and held them together, allowing people to go around her. So uh, incredible effort for her and both um, Alana obviously to Shell as well. Huge congratulations to them on, on another successful tournament. How much of an influence has Beth been around the group, not only for the Scorchers but now for WA since coming across? Yeah, huge. I think obviously she hasn't been in and around too much in terms of time, um, but when she is here she makes such a big impact. Uh, the girls seeing how she trains, how she goes about things, her professionalism, um, you just can't help but learn from her, whether you're a coach or a player. Um, so whilst we don't have her here day in and day out, um, she offers so much to the girls that can continue to learn off that, whether you're a young player or even one of the more senior players. In terms of your coaching, do you look to continue on Shelley's sort of, I guess, game plan, or do you come in with your own sort of set? Um, ideas and, and want to change things up a little bit. We're going to see wholesale changes there. Oh, I don't think wholesale changes. I was obviously involved in the process when Shelley was head coach. Um, I think we've got a really good foundation there for us to build on. Uh, we probably just mis-executed a little bit in terms of consistency last year, but in terms of the game plan, I think we're, we're pretty comfortable in where it sits. Uh, clearly, a big part of that is making sure that we can get the, the list management right and we can fill that um, to do that role, but there shouldn't be too many changes. It's just getting the players to go and back themselves out there. Speaking of the list management, Adam Bogue just talked about how having you know, himself and doing those, you know, the Shield, the One Day and also the Scorchers helps in terms of they're running the same program pretty much 12 months around. You doing the exact same thing here, does that maybe help you in terms of retaining those players, someone like a, a Beth Mooney who's crucial? Yeah, I hope so. I think, like you say, a lot of it's to do with relationships. Um, so the fact that I can work with these players 12 months of the year, um, huge in terms of being able to connect with them, but also to able to develop their game. So we've got a really clear idea of how we want to get our players, whether they're WA or interstate coming in. Um, we know what their role looks like at this level. So being able to work with them consistently over a period uh, is only beneficial to us, but also to them, hopefully, in terms of the continuity of coaching. I'm very uh, mindful of putting age on things, but at 32 years of age and you've been able to achieve so much already in coaching, do you pinch yourself at all and just think, I'm a head coach of so many various programs? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's something that you know I'm very aware of. I'm still relatively young coaching terms in my career. 
Um, I think playing at a high level has obviously helped me in terms of being exposed to different coaches. And I've always been a bit of a, um, a snuff, if you want, in terms of how I learn and watch the game. So um, it's clearly something for me that I want to just keep evolving in. Um, I'm comfortable in making mistakes. Obviously, it's a little bit more challenging at the highest level, but I've got really good support in Chris and Cade in giving me that room, I guess, to find my feet and work on those things. But um, most importantly for me is making sure that I lean on the people around me. So um, I'm not here to say that I, I know it all or I run the ship. It, it's a collaborative effort and that's intending on what I'm looking to do this year. Your team's done so well in terms of attracting some of the, the biggest names in the tournament, like you touched on Beth and Sophie and the like. What do you think it is that's made it, you know, made this possible and have you looked to continue that becoming like an attractive destination for the best players? Yeah, I think obviously from a Scorchers perspective, we've had success over a number of years in the competition, whether it's winning it or reaching finals. So I think success obviously attracts good players, but I think culturally um, it's something that we're really strong on here, that it comes from the top. So, you know, Chris will be down in the changing rooms wishing everyone good luck, whether we've won or lost. Um, Cade as well, the leadership that he's provided for us um, as coaches, but as players. So. Um, you know, particularly, I say particularly in the women's game, it's hard to speak for the men, but um, coaches and players care about who they play for and the environment that they're with, in. It's not just about winning. So, um, yeah, if I was to say one thing, it's probably that. That allows us to attract good people uh, and then the rest takes care of itself with the results as well.